Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So today is going to be the first of a beautiful series with, or sub-series within the Moving to Africa series that I have here on my channel. And today we are joined with the fabulous Vanessa. Hi. And um, Vanessa of Pro Intern. We're just going to talk with her, given that she is a Ugandan from the diaspora who grew up in the diaspora, had a different experience from being here in Kampala, and just talking with her about her move and starting a business in Uganda. Yeah. Thank you for coming on my channel. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. No, no problem. Okay. This video is brought to you by Bachazi, your number one source for all things in Uganda. Simply type in Bachazi in Instagram, click on their profile, and you're able to see so many options of various businesses in Uganda. When you click the link in the bio and put in your email, you'll be notified with way more features um, in the coming months. And you get a chance to win some really dope prizes like some trips and electronics depending on how many friends you share with. So share with seven and you get a chance to win it all. <laughs> Good luck everyone! Okay, so I want uh, you kind of just to tell my viewers a little bit about yourself and yeah, just elaborate on what you do. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vanessa Atim. As Rachel has mentioned, I'm from, di from the diaspora, so I'm born and raised in the UK, in London. Um, but I made the move back to Uganda in um, 2016. I'm the founder of Pro Interns Uganda, and Pro Interns is Uganda's first online internship platform. So we connect students and graduates in Uganda with employers through internship, volunteer, and training opportunities. That's amazing. Thank you. So how long have you been here in Uganda? Like, when did you make your move? What year? Um, I made the move in 2016, so it's been like close to four years now. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> See, it's possible, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Don't let the older generation tell it you really otherwise. Is. It really is. Honestly, <laughs> best decision of my life. Oh my God, that's amazing. So yeah. can you elaborate kind of how you started? Like, when, what made you decide that, you know what, this is it, this is the moment, I'm leaving? Okay, so... Um, um, so it's very interesting, actually, because um, and we had a chat, a quick chat mm -hmm. beforehand, but um, earlier on in my childhood, um, my mum would always bring me back to Uganda for summer holidays. So every year, year and a half, me and my brothers would come to Uganda for like uh, so <laughs> four, four weeks, you know, four weeks. And this would be like, you know, at the ages of, you know, 12, 13, 15. And I must admit, at those ages, I hated it. I really didn't like I think it. We all kind of did. I really didn't like it. I was like, why is she dragging me to Uganda? Why can't we go to America? Why can't we go to all of these other awesome countries? Places, why not? Yeah. And uh, and the things that really irked me back then, you know, I thought it was too hot, so the climate really got on my nerves. Yeah. Mosquitoes. Ooh, dust. They still got on my nerves. The dust. So it was just little things like that. And I remember when I was, um, you know in Uganda at that age, I would always count down. Mm -hmm. So I'd be like, you know, two weeks left until we go back to London, you know, one week left until we go back. And it's so funny how things changed so dramatically over mm -hmm. the years. So um, when I was 20, I guess the life changing moment for me, um, when I was 23 um, going on 24, I decided to take a solo trip. Um, so I took a solo trip to Uganda mm -hmm. and of course I have extended family here. Yes, it's always so, the solo which trips. Is, <laughs> yeah. So I guess during that trip I was here for only like two and a half weeks but I got speaking with a relative of mine from my mother's side who was unemployed for two and a half years post university mm -hmm. and that's, that's crazy. yeah and that's a, um, a, circ a situation that so many um, graduates face not only here in Uganda but like on, a, on an international yes, scale yes. you know leaving university and being uncertain for what the yeah. future holds in terms that was of your all career. of us at one yeah. point yeah so I said to him aren't there any existing so he would actually you know before I even posed a question to him he said to me he'd go into town with his CV with his briefcase you know looking for opportunities and the door just kept getting slammed in his face oh, wow. he was always told you don't have the skills and you don't have the experience and it's that catch-22 situation right. where it's like how am I going to gain the experience if you don't give me the opportunity exactly um, so I said to him aren't there any existing you know platforms um you know or initiatives or programs and this was back in 2015 yes. in Uganda that focus on helping bridge the skills gap or even connecting students and graduates to these 
opportunities right. um, like we have say for example in the UK yeah and a lot in Canada and, as and, well and in yeah. the US and in Canada as well and he said no and I guess that was you know the motivation behind mm. the why that I do pro interns today right. so that was like the like Oprah would say that aha moment yeah. for me which yeah. I find so interesting because I the fact that it was 2015 literally I was like Okay, 2015, I felt like this would have been an idea already or already would have been an initiative or maybe a company would have done like a subsection and tried to start something like this because there are so many. First of all, there's where our median age in Uganda is like 15 or 16. You can just shows it just shows there's so many youth here. And I just figured, okay, someone should be looking out for them. Like that's the that's the future, the near future. Exactly. 77% of our population are youth. Yeah, it's just crazy. And you'll find that, you know, internships are imperative in the university experience yeah. or in academia because you need an internship in order to pass. Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> like, um, what are you going to do? And I think, you know, even in saying internships, it's important to have a quality internship because you don't want to just be making tea or something. Right, like, like or a male just pushing the male exactly. cart like in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I guess, like, um, from that conversation, when I got back to London, I started doing my market research. Okay. So I started looking at, and that's something that's, like, really important when you're starting up a business. Huge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you have to start looking at like what other businesses are in existence mm-hmm. that are trying to do what you're tr- that, that, that you're, you're, what you're mm-hmm. aiming to do. Um, so then, when I had done my market research, I had set up um, pro intern social media channels, right. Twitter and Facebook, and I just started sharing information, you know, informative articles about the benefits of interning and volunteering and so on and right. so forth. And then. Um, from that, I set up a landing page. So my background, even before recruitment, is marketing. Mm. So I set up my own marketing page via Wix.com. Yeah. Which is a free website. Builder. Free and free easy. Free plug for them. <laughs> and, right? <laughs> you better reach out. Reach I out. know. Um, and um, when I did that one page, uh, landing page, which said, you know, Uganda's internship program coming soon in mm. 2016, I had over 150 signups in one month. That's amazing. And it was just like, you know, confirmation and you know mm-hmm. like having your ideas solidified like yeah. I had emails from graduates and students saying we need a platform or a program like right. this in Uganda so um that was an, around um July August of 2015 2015 okay and then um after that period there was a, a competition so on Twitter there was like a call for applicants from the diaspora and from the continent. Um, so this was um, by the African Land of Business and Orange okay. Africa at the so time. So open to people from the UK. Yeah, open, yeah, okay. diaspora in general. Oh, diaspora so like, in general. Yeah. Okay. So the diaspora. We'll right. leave that info <laughs> below. Right. Um, so that was at the time. In 2015. Okay, I hope it's so. still there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it was like, okay, if you are a startup, if you have a business idea or a business um, mm. that aims to provide which aims to provide some sort of social impact in your community or society right. submit your idea and i submitted the idea of pro in- so i submitted the idea of pro interns and mm. it was just an idea then so believe in your ideas guys so at this point you did do your market like yeah, fit analysis market, you yeah, kind of like did all, all of that, that. okay Landing okay page was up, very crucial all of that. <laughs> and then i applied so out of 600 applicants i was shortlisted um among 60 and mm. i was invited That's to amazing. paris in december 2015 <laughs> to pitch pro interns right. and it was such an amazing opportunity that's confirmation in itself that's yeah. like out of 600 people you're the 60 like yeah, yeah. clearly this is a very viable it was, it was, it was, <laughs> very important it was, yeah, necessary it was, thing it was so amazing and it was just like i had the opportunity to rub shoulders with other young african mm. entrepreneurs oh, from different you know, from, yeah from different countries mm. like, uh, across the continent and obviously from the diaspora as well and um it was you know, through that opportunity in terms of, you know, networking that mm. I managed to meet one of one of our biggest clients at Pro Interns. Oh. So networking is, you know, super It's crucial. Important. I was just telling her, like, we'll talk more about it in the business part of this segment, but um, I was just telling her, like, I have this business, business idea. I'm, like, really ready to go, but I'm scared someone will steal my <laughs> idea. And she's like, sis, stop it. Literally, <laughs> Literally just cut it. Just, it, like, people will always have your ideas. Yeah. Just keep talking. And I was like, okay, I'll 
Just keep talking and execute. No one else yes. will execute your idea so, like yeah. you. Yeah, that's true. Shoot. That's, that's super important. So, yeah. Okay, so um, I guess people would love to know because this is uh, something that I touched on on my um, on this in the series in December, um, just about the like, financial situation. So, what financial situation did you leave back in the UK? What before you came yeah. here? And obviously, like, did you have like a giant amount of savings before you were like? I'm going to live in Uganda. Yeah, like, yeah. what? Where? Where were you at with your finances? Um. So. Um. Okay. So just, I guess, in addition, I'll, I'll come to that in a moment. Mm. But after that competition that I just mentioned, mm. that's when I booked my one-way ticket. Ah. Okay. Yeah. That's what. That's where I was coming Uganda. with this question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I booked my one-way ticket in December 2015, and I was like, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. But I guess before actually taking the action and booking that ticket. When I had already known that I wanted to start with pro interns, I started saving religiously. That's so I saved key. beforehand, <laughs> but when I knew that this is what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. I started saving religiously. All your coins. And it was like to the point that I didn't have fun sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, the little because, sac- yeah, business sacrifice. sacrifice. <laughs> and delayed gratification is something that I've learned very early on in my life. Oh, that's good. So it's like putting off, learning. you know, yeah, <laughs> putting off the you know immediate reward for something much bigger right. later on. Yeah. So um, yeah, I started saving like half of my paycheck. Oh, that's so good. So I started saving every month, and it, you know, so for like a year. Yeah. Okay. No, not for not for a year. It okay. A year, maybe like eight, eight, eight months. Okay, but that's still a significant yeah. amount of time. Yeah. Okay. And Key to if, know. if my <laughs> friends were like, you know, some of sometimes I didn't go to the turn ups. Yeah. You know, because I knew I had this bigger vision. That was me you know, last in mind. year. So mm-hmm. I was in a comfortable <laughs> position financially. I had enough savings, mm-hmm. obviously, to like be able to afford my ticket and to just afford living in Uganda. Right. Um, to afford like you know putting money back into the starting the business essentially right but then also um i lived with family so mm, okay. that was like an expense that i didn't have to worry about i didn't have to worry about rent i didn't have to worry right. about food because huge. i was fortunate <laughs> enough to have you know amazing family right that I, extended family that I lived which is here. very much part of your network like just like yeah. Vanessa was saying network is so important Definitely. use your family that's here like we're all ugandans in the diaspora yeah. but we have a base here whomever even your family's connections where it's like okay maybe they have somewhere you can stay for cheaper maybe uh, a friend of them has a room in a more um convenient location yeah whatever network <laughs> network is, networking is so it's so key so key and yeah sometimes you have to start like that there's mm. nothing there's no shame in living no. with your family there's no, no shame in you know living with your friend mm. if it means that you have to you know make ends meet for the time being right to get to where you want to get to mm-hmm. then by all means do that delayed delayed gratitude gratification (laughs) also still learning so don't worry i'm a bit extra i'm like but i want it now (laughs) the worst anyway so what were the pros and cons that you weighed before making your move were you just like i'm leaving like quite a few of us like myself or were you kind of like okay maybe the uk might have something that's better maybe i should stay maybe i shouldn't i think you know for me having a growth mindset is very key as well so like um (laughs) I always saw the positive side. So like obviously the pros the pros were I didn't have any extreme responsibilities. And okay. what I mean by that, you know, not married, <laughs> didn't don't you know, I didn't have um or don't have a mortgage, um Kids. no children. So practically free in Yeah, sense literally of the word. just free. So if I wanted to pick up and go, whether it's Uganda or anywhere else, mm-hmm. I felt like I could do that that's the kind of mindset that i have and it was just like and if it doesn't work out what's the worst that can happen you, you go back, back to the uk for a job and god willing you get an opportunity. yeah so my thing was okay it, it may be a big thing of course having to quit your job because that's what i did i quit mm-hmm. my job in order to pursue um pro interns and to kind of make that vision come into fruition right. but i thought if it doesn't work out jobs i have the skills yeah. you know i have the experience i have um, the education, They'll I can always, always yep. go back to the UK and, you know, re-strategize. Or if parenthood doesn't work here in Uganda and I wanted to look for a job here, there's always I'm that sure opportunity. I could do that. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, it's about having that growth, growth mindset. Yep. Not thinking that, oh my gosh, if this doesn't work out, everyone's going to laugh. I'm yeah. going to fail. Nothing's going to work out. Oh my out. God, there's no, no room for that in business. You no. can't care no. about what people think about you at all. I learned that very early on with like other businesses business I had. Life. life, yes. But then I feel like a lot of people will be a little bit more complacent. They True. do care. You can see kind of how they yeah. move. But in business, specifically, you, there's no room. There's no room. <laughs> there's so, no room. that's the kind of mindset that I had. It was just literally like, 
I'm moving literally by faith. I'm walking by yeah. faith, not by sight. Oh my gosh. That's so obviously ooh, being child, smart, like it. I said, having savings yes, as well. a plan but and everything. But also being like, okay, do you know what? Being open to the fact that if it doesn't work out, I'll still be fine. Yeah, you'll be, you'll, yes, yeah. that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a big thing um, that I have on my channel, obviously through this whole moving to Africa, is that people have seen me kind of... Um, Go and maneuver myself around Kampala, getting comfortable and whatever. How long did it take you to settle in where you felt like I now have a home? Like I, I open my door, I put, turn my key and I'm like, I'm comfortable. I would say it took around three months. Okay. And oh, that's, that's I have, good. I have like a cousin brother here. Shout out to Eric. I love Hi, him Eric. so much. Um, he really helped me like settle in and make me feel that's comfortable huge. because he connected me to like all of his friends. So, like, two of his good um, girlfriends, like, mm -hmm. you know, are, not, like, now two of my good girlfriends, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. So, I feel like that's how a lot of us, how we kind of yeah, maneuver so, like, get he here. connected me, like, he would always take me to, like, you know, barbecues and out to some of his meetings. Mm. And, and he'd never be afraid to, like, connect me with, yeah. you know, even his professional contacts. So, I feel like um, because, I, because I was open to it as well, like, don't be like, oh, you know, I'm new here. I have no friends. Like, yeah. When I, I don't think there's room for that out, either. Yeah, like, if someone invites you out, go, go to the event. Go socialize. Connect, socialize with people mm. because that person knows someone else and that could lead to, you know, a friendship or it could lead to a business relationship. But I'd say it took about three months. Three months. Oh, um, that's so manageable. Like, um, that's... And also, we thank God because during those three months, that's when Uber was introduced. <gasps> oh, you were here. I remember the years before when it was just special so, hires and I was living in Buziga. Oh, child. Wow. I was like, no, no, no. Number okay. one special I'm not are, it's not sustainable. So, guys, special hires are basically like taxis, cab, like yeah. private taxis, right? You can't but they're super choose. expensive. So, of course, and then you have the tattoos, which are like, you know. Which is like, I don't want to go in there, but I don't. Buses, right? <laughs> And it's just like, I didn't want to get into one of those because I felt very claustrophobic. Yeah, Sometimes and Sometimes the chicken could just be in the, yeah. oh, you know. I don't, I don't want us to sound like privileged or anything. It's just literally like I have uncles who gave me horror stories. Yeah. Yeah being pickpocketed, all their stuff taken, and I was like, okay, I know I have to be extra safe, extra yeah. careful, and it, they just, they're like buses, they just drop yeah, you anywhere, you're exactly. not at your door. So, mm -mm. so <laughs> yeah, so special hires were too, were, 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 were private hires, special hires so yeah. were too expensive, mm -hmm. so then when Uber was introduced, I just literally was like, thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Do you have a car here now? Not yet, yeah, I'm in the uh, process that's... of getting one. Ah, a but long date for <laughs> I'm also scared to drive because I feel like, you know, really? The rules of the road are not really there. It's not a big one. car. I don't want to bully people. Yeah. Like, get out of my way. <laughs> the rules of the road are not really there. And then I'm scared of sitting in jam. But mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I'm getting, I'll be getting a car soon. Probably. Okay, yeah. good. So my next question has to be, um, why Uganda? Could you see yourself anywhere else on the continent or in the world? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Me too. As in, it's Uganda all yeah. the way. Uganda, home, you, home is best. Mm -hmm. And... I love Uganda so much. Oh and God, you'll even too. see, like, when expats come over here... Oh, they love it! They love it. They make homes here. Like, guys, home is best. And I feel like I would encourage everyone from the diaspora, whether from Uganda or Ghana or wherever it is, oh, just go, go back home, experience it. If you are, you know, you're still young and you don't have, you know, loads of responsibilities mm -hmm. and you want to experience what it's like living home, do it for three months, do it for six months, you know? Yeah, try it out. Take that leap and mm -hmm. try it out and see how you find it. But I, Uganda is home for me. That's, um, awesome. you know. Love to hear it, especially for people from the diaspora. Uganda is home. Like, <laughs> it's obviously so lovely to go home back to London and visit mm -hmm. family because my immediate family are in and are from London. Mm -hmm. But home is it's, best. Yeah. And what I like about being home is that some of my cousins who wouldn't necessarily, you know, visit home that often because they maybe had a perception of Uganda are like, you make home look cool. Yeah. You oh, my God. Home. The amount of people who've yeah. been like, oh, I don't even know what life you live in Uganda, but what? I was like, sir, like, sir and sisters, like, just come. Like, just even if it like, like Vanessa was mentioning, you just come every year for a bit. You ease yourself in. I did that Christmas for... Christmas is a good time. Yeah, December, dirty December. <laughs> but I did that for the last six years. And then I think last year I was just like, I'm over it. 
too many excuses i don't have anything tying me down let's go yeah so yeah okay so now that vanessa's touched a lot about um pro interns and um how she started her journey here in kampala definitely want to hear more about your day-to-day -day. what does that look like is it a standard like nine to five would you say you're more mobile like how does that um work? so i guess like Currently, of course, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah, so, that, that too. <laughs> you know, in, in the midst of everything and, and COVID-19, it's been like more laptop-based. Okay. And um, I guess I'm lucky because my business is predominantly... It is, it is online, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. It's an online internship. Platform. A dream for so many people. Um, yeah, but some of it does require offline work. Like, in terms of employee engagement, mm -hmm. going to employers' offices and getting them to, like, you know, advertise their opportunities with us or right. meeting with other employers to understand what their HR needs are and interviewing, you know, students and graduates. So there's a lot of offline, you know, work that needs to be done, but right. had to be put on pause because of COVID. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm really grateful at the f because, you know, I can use my laptop and work from wherever right. I want. Um, but currently I work um, at a co-working space called the Innovation Village. Which is where we are which today. Where we are <laughs> Beautiful um, space. Oh my it's God. It's based in, um, in Tinder here in Kampala. Um, so this is where I normally work from, and we have like you can you can work from any desk really. It's like mm -hmm. you know, hot hot desk. Really nice. Um, so, and there are like various blocks. So you have block C, you know, block B, and um, what was that other block? A? Block no, block D. <laughs> oh, block a, no. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, there are various blocks that you can work from, and then they have of course like twenty four hour access. Oh, okay. Actually, it's not twenty four hours. I lied. But late, 20, like yeah, late. So okay. you can work until like ten p.m. The doors okay. will still be which open, is so good to really avoid good. jam. You yeah. can kind of make your hours work around. Yeah, and then of course they have like fast internet. They have events and mm. stuff like that. Okay, and it's really huge. nice working in a startup or should I say like business community because if you need to bounce off ideas from someone, I you can like walk that. over to someone else and just be like, you know, what? I'm planning on on this event or I want to kind of execute mm. this particular, you know, um, you know. Um, product or service on my yeah. platform what are your thoughts That's and then they so can actually huge. give you some like real insights and be like okay but how are you going to make money from this or if or what what's the aim of this are you, are you mm -hmm. doing it to, you know do you want more employers on board so it's just really nice and i feel like like-minded really, people yeah, I'm around like-minded people and i've really built really good friendships through know, being here this space. Space. Oh, that's huge so Ooh. yeah ideas is, yeah. ideas so okay. i have really missed it you know having had to work from home because mm -hmm. of covid and it's nice to finally be, be able to yeah so sorry just so that you guys know the full name of it um the innovation village okay there we go so if you are planning to you know visit you know uganda definitely visit the innovation village if you're looking to you know hot, mm. hot desk and work and, and some like space that. that's yeah. true and tina's not bad um there's i've, I've personally found back roads to get around yeah. so it's not that bad coming from how different do you areas say it? Say it? In Tinda? Oh, yeah. Why? How are you? I say in Tinda. In Tinda. Is that what I say? Someone else would laugh at the way we both pronounce it. Really? We're both pronouncing it wrong, but it's fine. I didn't know that. Say it again? In Tinda. In Tinda. I was. I thought. I was here whatever like my mom says. I'm like, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I sound like her. Meanwhile, no. Okay, so very big question. This is a very important one because I feel like a lot of people um, in the diaspora, not young people, but mainly older, the older generation, our parents, kind of are very discouraging about doing business in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Mind you guys, times have changed. Uganda's quick now. Like Uganda yeah. two years ago is not Uganda two years before that, and it's not Uganda 20 years before mm -hmm. that. So um, a big thing was them saying, how are you going to do business in Uganda? How do you expect to do business? So how have you found doing business how have you found the change in the pace of life because it's very different from here yeah. on this continent i think yeah. in general but i think doing business the difference between doing business say for example in london and in kampala is that it's you have to really focus on relationship building here mm -hmm. and yeah. people like meeting <laughs> face to face so before you even get to start talking about business I'm just realizing like, that lately you have to actually meet yeah so you, you meet over coffee or a glass of wine in an uh, informal setting that is because so if somebody i feel like especially in uganda and i don't know if it's an african thing but it's like if someone likes you they'll do business with you mm -hmm. so they i feel like it's kind of That's feeling so out your personality like a first date out, type of yeah like <laughs> but in, in business yeah literally that is no because i actually didn't realize this was a thing i started reaching out to people for another part of the series just yeah. looking at homes and they were like oh yeah let's sit down and talk so to me in my western way mm -hmm. i was like this is wasting my time i just want to like let's just talk via email well, <laughs> but email, i didn't know this was thing. a thing so you can't, you can't, yeah, it's email. very rare that you close a deal by email you have to have you see like for example how 
in I'll say in the Western I'm learning world, today. you can send out like a campaign, and it's like you know to, to, for this service buy now, like and mm-hmm. you put your car details in, and whatever the campaign is, for, yeah, you're ready, just to, kind ready of to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like if it's a service, mm-hmm. and even sometimes if it's a product, but if it's a service, you have to kind of have a meeting first. Wow. So it's like let's meet and discuss first. So like in the beginning, I had to meet with a lot of heads of universities. Mm-hmm. I had to meet with a lot of. Yeah, so that makes that makes sense. That part, I, yeah. Employers okay. of and, and organizations, mm-hmm. people want to meet with you, even yeah. if like our platform is an online platform where you can easily upload your CV. Yeah. Some students and graduates will come to our office just to be like, let's just, is this real? Yeah. You know, it's and and I think because of sometimes fraudulent business activity. Yeah, I was gonna say it's um, kind of reflective of this whole cash economy versus yeah, like credit card. Yeah. Like they need to see. So things. it's like I I realized that the difference was you have to meet people and build relationships first mm-hmm. before you actually go into business. Uh, Okay. and then from I then if you have a good product or service you will get referred so it's like oh go to Rachel for this mm. or go to Vanessa if you're looking for stuff go yeah. to Vanessa if you need to, if you need to build a team right. because that you word of mouth. those relationships on the ground mm-hmm. your business then spreads like okay. via word of mouth right. so I think that's, that was a difference for me For me, and in the beginning it was very annoying because I'm like yeah. this is time I'm like this we is, could be doing things is, like yeah, quick quick time sensitive like <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have to come and literally meet mm. sit in jam, number one. Yeah. And then meet you, number two. And then obviously have a conversation, which probably has nothing to do with business. So like, right. I'm just feeling you out as yeah, a person. Yeah, they're like, how are and you? And then How's afterwards, life? like, oh, so now shoot me over that email. Let's yeah. get that deal done. So that's what I, that's what I found oh, with, an with, adjustment. with business Ooh. here. And it was definitely an, an adjustment. adjustment. So like, it, what my day today looks like in a week, I have, I have quite a few mm-hmm. meetings. Um, of course, because of COVID, we didn't really have any meetings. Right. Um, and recruitment had slowed down because right. of a lot of businesses. But generally, it's like meeting, whether you're meeting an employer, whether you're meeting someone at university yeah, level. That's why some, everyone's always or, at a yeah, meeting. I'm like, I'm always, 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 always at meetings. Even like, someone messaged email. me before, before <laughs> we having this chat, and I said, I'm just in a small meeting. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be me in a few months. Small meeting, every day. Meeting, meeting. I'm like, damn. I'm, I'm just in a small meeting. I'm not I'm just used to this. <laughs> So. Oh, I was just such a like a go 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 now 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 yeah, person. No, I guess no. I'm gonna have to learn no, to and just. There's a lot of red tape, so there's levels to it. <sighs> like depending on what your on what your product or service is, there's levels mm-hmm. to it. You might need to sign an MOU, like a m- memorandum of understanding, mm-hmm. before you even get to the business side of things. Wow. You know, so oh. and then you have sometimes you have a meeting to discuss the meeting <laughs> to discuss the meeting, and then I, you're like, what was yeah, the agenda? Like, I don't again? have time for all. This. And, <laughs> You even forgot your main purpose. <laughs> I'm done. So it's important to go into meetings, guys, with agendas. Yeah. Otherwise, you can find yourself just. Oh my god, I'm done. About. So unfortunately, we had just filmed a whole bunch, and my dumb camera cut it off. So oh. we're just gonna do a few more questions. Is your immediate family here? And if not, how has it been adjusting with them not being in Uganda? So my immediate family are all in the UK, mm-hmm. um, in London, um, and. Adjusting in the beginning was hard, but because I have family here as well, they made it much easier for me. Um, And then also, um, like I said previously, the advancement of technology has really been a savior for me. Yeah. So like being able to like FaceTime my mom every other day and my gran and my aunts and uncles and, you know, being zoomed in like my friend is one of my friends is pregnant. So being able to be zoomed in on her baby shower Um, and then like you know like other things so like just being able to have you know access to social media where you can like Mm -hmm. comment on your friends and then whatsapp her and then stuff like that so it's just like i'm really happy that we have you know socials and it's not like you know our parents generation where you probably have to send letters and they arrive dusty the ghetto (laughs) i mean we just were talking in the previous segment about the fact that like when they used to send you as a kid it'd be like go get me the phone card like uh, whatever they were scratching (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and like, you brought the one wrong one. This is five cents. I needed three cents a minute. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that's right. So like now being able to just WhatsApp and mm-hmm. and just an internet connection can be tricky. Sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even if you've got like a stable internet provider, which I do, but it's I won't still... mention them. Yeah, but um, yeah, not sponsored. So, <laughs> but yeah, but other than that, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So obviously, everyone kind of follows people through Instagram and can see what they're doing through stories or Snapchat and whatever so what are your favorite things to do in Kampala where is it that you like to frequent um okay so I like um I like going out a lot I'm a very mm. outgoing person I'm That's an me. extrovert <laughs> so I like going to the alchemist that's another bar yeah like Bandali Rice guys Bandali Rice 
the rice. Don't you love how every year something changes in Kampala? Like last year, Bandali rice is never that whole. Listen, guys, to go like, out. What do you mean? Waiting for no? to be like done oh. with properly, so we can go back to Bandali rice. Oh. So, Bandali rice is like a street in um, yeah, Bugalobi. In Bugalobi. And basically, it's like a strip of bars and restaurants. No, yeah, they're bars they're bars and restaurants. Kitchens, whatever yeah. they're supposed to be. Now they're yeah. restaurants because it's COVID. Yeah, so I like I like I like going out. I like meeting mm. with friends. I like mm. having a drink with friends and you know family. Mm-hmm. But then also I like doing other things like going you know to maybe a hotel and chilling out by the pool and just you know reading a book. That's and, such a thing here know. as well. So, yeah, and, and it's really nice being able to do those things because I, I never was able to do that in london like mm-hmm. when i mean when <laughs> it it's would summer, be like maybe, a treat it's like okay we'll do that with our friends like once a month yeah and but it's here like, you, you if you wanted to do that day. every weekend here you or really every other weekend you could <laughs> and then there's also like you know amazing you know safari experiences and lodges that you can go to mm-hmm. outside of kampala you can go to Jinja, you can go to choba safari mm-hmm. and there's a lot of nicer lodges now popping up yeah. in the area as well so it's like oh i can go and feel like i'm really on a vacation exactly. somewhere abroad <laughs> exactly so like I feel like, you know, post-COVID, there's going to be a lot of domestic mm-hmm. travel, guys. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sponsored by Uganda Tourism Board. <laughs> right? Um, so Shoot! Guys, Hello! You know, <laughs> you can start traveling within Uganda, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah. let's just try and make oh, more use. And seeing so much of what so we much have to, to offer. so much to see mm-hmm. and do. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what, that's what I enjoy. So it's been a pleasure having Vanessa on my channel. I'm so happy you came. So we're just going to ask you a few more questions. So what do you love most about living here in Uganda? Um, the weather. Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that the sun is always shining. And, you know, when it's rainy season, it'll rain for like, what, an hour? Yeah, very short and period. And the sun comes back up. So like the weather and the sunsets. Oh, child. Yes, that's what I was saying earlier that we're both fortunate we have balconies. So that's something to consider when you're moving. If like on your own get a place with a view or a balcony or something because sis oh <laughs> the, the sunset you will fall in love every with evening with a glass They're of wine mind, listen <laughs> mind blowing so i think you know it's a mixture of like you know you know the weather being with you know your family and friends and mm-hmm. that being your community and family here mm-hmm. um that's just something that's really really nice like everyone's tight-knit you can yes. go and visit your aunt and uncle on sunday for dinner mm-hmm. after you've gone to church or, or whatever it is you're doing it's mm-hmm. always like connected to Very. family and friends so you you know it's not like no one's too busy for you i feel like yes. when you're home mm-hmm. no one's too busy for you when it, when i'm in london it's like let's pencil that meet up in oh, x y and z i will see friends every like six weeks like people are just get so busy yeah. people just get so exhausted so they don't want to move exactly. you're driving so many places oh exactly so, it's so nice so being here yeah that's food, huge. I, I like I like eating out, but I like local food as I well. I like local food. Ah, Jidat, Posho, like sweet potatoes. I love local, so like I love the local food. It's so mm. organic. You know, even being able to go to the market and pick out a fresh, you know, fresh vegetables, tomatoes, green peppers, mm-hmm. a big, you know, pineapple, oh. mangoes, like those you know fresh organic you know food items that yeah. you can obviously get when you're like abroad but it's oh, not but as when, organic it's not as fresh you and know, when you throw different. the word organic abroad the price skyrockets yeah, it's here different, organic guys. is literally grown in your yeah. backyard you're the cost oh anyway it's yeah. just completely different so i like that you know like the social aspect mm-hmm. you know the weather it's all mixed together that what that's what really makes it a real yes. experience for ah, me. The work-life true. balance, you can achieve it. You can achieve it when you're It's at home. so plausible yeah. here. It's crazy. It's actually quite scary how it's like, I haven't really been living. <laughs> <Yes. Yes. laughs> what? <laughs> and just wanted to ask, what has been your biggest adjustment with being here? Um, my biggest adjustment here is efficiency. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, um, Things don't Huge. happen fast enough here sometimes. You know, like when you order an Uber, you still have to direct, like, Sibyl, you first turn here, you first slope down. And, you know, it's just like, just get here. I'm like, just follow the pen. Follow the pen. You know, so like the efficiency of sometimes you're in a supermarket and they're just taking really long to put your mm. items across. Oh, you're, you know, the petrol station getting something and it's just like, they're just 
so the efficiency it's isn't been the biggest adjustment because we're from go 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 yeah, cities so like go 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 mm-hmm. and then my cousin will remind me slow down like where Appreciate, are you going smell the roses that's yeah. what my uncle loves to so say like, oh. just calm down so like that's one thing that I yeah really wish, uh, efficiency i feel like convenience we're starting to get there mm-hmm. like with, you know safe water being able to deliver bring your thing i actually like that I, we have that over the west so, yeah. i can get a boda to bring me my something from a friend's in two seconds but i'm like oh that i like yeah <laughs> So being able to like yeah, so yeah. have those small errands done for mm. you and it's convenient. Yeah, you know, I think my so. biggest thing in, in in terms of convenience that I miss though yeah. is like online ordering and like Amazon and something oh, coming yeah. and like da 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 like you get your order like I think of a pair of shoes I want I can get them in that yeah. day or tomorrow. But then you have her fashion box. Oh yes. Anna, so like you can get your ASOS dresses. And That's heels true. And stuff from That's too, true. So, you know. so I need an electronics plug. That's what I clearly okay. need. Yeah. To give me a new camera so it doesn't cut off footage. Oh. <laughs> and what do you miss most about living, uh, being in the UK though? Um, I guess my family mm-hmm. that's the one thing that i can say that i miss so like it's my so family true. and friends and just mm-hmm. being close to them um and then i would also say like you know the yeah, efficiency and the mm-hmm. convenience but apart from that like home is where it's at home is best like home. other than that other than being close to family mm-hmm. um, and friends um this is everything there's, there's, there's nothing that i miss too much yeah. aside out of out of what i just mentioned absolutely everything like i love home i love uganda so much and i will literally encourage everyone like even if you're from ghana nigeria (laughs) kenya wherever you're from visit home Mm -hmm. as frequently as possible if you don't have any like major responsibilities try and live home Mm -hmm. for like three to six months and just feel it out just Just a feeler just a feeler i'm sure you i'm sure you will flood rachel's inbox like (laughs) oh my gosh girl thank you (laughs) through the deed sis and on that amazing note i just want to ask you what advice would you give someone like three pieces of advice or something just quick that who's someone who's like i'm inspired i want to leave now like what 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 would you I say i think you have to <laughs> like before like making that big move because it is a big and it is a big yeah move, it is quite i big. think first you need to find out like what is your why why are you doing that why do you want to move to uganda or to kenya or to you know ghana why do you want to move Mm -hmm. um why do you want to start that business why do you want to make that career change you know and it has to make sense for you Mm -hmm. because there will be times throughout your journey where it will be challenging yep you will miss your family so much (laughs) there will be like stuff happening in your business you're just like oh my gosh what is happening why did i do that and for me (laughs) when i remember my why yeah that's what grounds me and it brings me back so i think you need to understand what that why also be mindful of like where you want to stay so whether it's you know in tebe and that's you know a considerable amount it's, it's, it's a bit far, far. <laughs> you know, from kampala so just being also open mm. open-minded and understanding where you want to live why you want to go into that business even in terms of researching that potential role that you want to go in in your career so mm. how much does it pay how many well, what's the salary? What does the salary yep. look like? So being able to understand all of these things before you move back. Yeah. Um, and of course, the last point, which should have been the first point, prayer. You know, you Huge. have to put God first. Huge. Um, because I feel like that will provide you the clarity that you need. Okay, guys, my camera wants to act up and I just want to do this outro. <laughs> this is the third attempt. Girl. So we're just going to do that. Vanessa's last point, a piece of advice for you guys. Yeah. And then we're done. So the very last point is just take a chance on yourself. You know, you have to believe in yourself um, and you have to believe in what God wants for you. So I feel like if you don't take a chance on yourself and if you don't try, guys, the keyword is try. Because if you fail, you can go back. Mm-hmm. You can go back to London. It will always be an option. You, to to. <laughs> you can look for a job. You know, you're, you're not, not going hopefully anywhere. going to be homeless. But mm-hmm. try. Take a chance on yourself. Try. Believe. Mm-hmm. And you will just, you know, because I feel like if I didn't believe in myself, I wouldn't be where I am today. And um, of course, I feel like I still have so much further that I want to go and so much that I want to do, but I'm content with where I am. So guys, take a chance on yourself. Ah, and on that note, literally, I'm going to cry. I just got chills again, even though we said this like twice, because I feel like you're speaking to me, even though I'm already here in Uganda. But still, when you have ideas and passions and you hear people this passionate and this excited about what they do, it like you just get excited every time it's just like butterflies oh, so thank, thank you. you so much vanessa thank for coming on my and channel i'm so proud of you and oh, congratulations you. on your first like <laughs> thank, 
thank you i know i'm like trying to break through but um thank you guys thank you vanessa if you, uh people want to come and get in contact with you for your business and for personal where yep. can they find you so my instagram is vanessa underscore atim and the same with my twitter same with linkedin facebook is personal um and then for my website is www pro pro dash interns.com perfect so thank, you. thank you for coming on my thank channel you. guys thank you so much for tuning into another episode on the moving to africa series and i'll see you guys in my next video What's up? bye loves What's up? <laughs>